Hi everybody, this is Angie from the Honeysuckle Haven. Welcome to They Paid What? Um, this is episode four. If you are joining me on either Crafter on the Clock TV, the Honeysuckle Haven page, or on YouTube, I am so glad you joined me. So here on um, They Paid What? I hope to help you never pay full price for decor you love. So tonight we are gonna kind of we're gonna recreate. Um, it's gonna be inspired again, so not exactly um, a French country table riser is what it is. So if you did not see what it looks like, go back to the Honeysuckle Haven page or Craft on the Clock, and there's a picture showing what it looks like the table riser, so you can compare what mine looks like compared to the original. And the original cost, I think it was, I wrote it down. $143.99 and we're going to recreate one tonight for less than $24 but then I'm going to give you options for even way less than that so I'm super excited I'm going to go through the supplies here if you are hopping on say hi and let me know you're out there let me know if you are new um, if you are watching on replay and maybe where you're watching from so I hope everyone's having a good week. We are Tuesday, it's Tuesday. So supplies that we are using. We are gonna use a Dollar Tree wood plank. This came from Dollar Tree. Um, you can get it in just their wood section. Um, this one is, let me put the dimensions. So in case you don't have a Dollar Tree near you or you just wanna purchase wood to use, it is 18 inches by four and a half, 18 by four and a half. So we're gonna use that tonight. Let me get rid of this yard stick here. We're gonna use some rope trim that I got from Lowe's. Now this was the most expensive thing that I bought. Um, I tried to keep it as low as I could because that's the whole purpose, recreating it for less. We don't wanna pay the full price, the $144. Um, so this was the most expensive. For an 8-foot piece, it was $14, and I used almost the whole 8-foot piece. This is all I have left. <laughs> so um, you'll use the whole thing. We're going to use wood planks from Dollar Tree. We're going to use two of the little, I guess, what do they call these? I don't know what they call them. Wood trays, the little wood trays from Dollar Tree. We're going to use a few tumble, tumbling blocks and some flowers. So I have some little cream flowers we're going to use. Also a few paint sticks that are cut. Now this is another option that you won't necessarily have to use. I'll show you when I get to this part and give you other options. So these are paint sticks that I cut. And the very last thing, these came from Lowe's. Look at this. If you saw the picture today that I posted, these are the same exact feet that they are legs that they used in the inspiration piece. These came from Lowe's and they're called Large Craft Finial. I'll put that up there if you want to take a screenshot of that. Hold that there for a second in case you recreate this and look they are exactly the same so super excited i found those hello everyone thank you thank you thanks for joining tonight i'm so happy you joined me all right so we're going to get started while you're hopping on i will be saying hi if you have questions throw questions out there comments i already painted our rope trim so that I did a lot of prep work because the last couple times I ran kind of late and I don't want to run late tonight so you can see the finished product and see it uh, decorated you know with stuff in it okay so we're painting the wood plank from Dollar Tree this really pretty color called dusk it's a uh, Waverly chalk paint and it's I guess it's kind of like a robin's egg blue really pretty blue so that's what we're doing. We're going to paint two coats. I already painted the other side. So if you see a little bit of sloppy, you see paint on this, that's why. Because I got a little bit on the back. Two coats on this. And I think that's the only thing blue that we're going to paint. I have everything else ready. 
I thought this color was really pretty and really close to the inspiration piece, if you saw that. If not, go back and check it out, because when we're all done, I want you to be able to compare, see how we did here, how close we got. Okay, I'm just going to put one coat on, let it dry, get some heat on it to dry it quick, quickly, and then we'll put a second coat on it real quick. And then that's all we'll need the blue for right now. Okay, let's put some heat on it so I can say hi to some people out there. Hi, Sheila. And Martha, where do you find, where do you find the, oh, is the Waverly paint, is that what your Waverly chalk paint? I still get mine at Walmart, but I know some people can't. Um, Hobby Lobby has a good chalk paint. I know you can get chalk paint at Lowe's, in the paint department at Walmart, you can get a chalk paint there that comes in pint sizes. Okay, I'm going to get this dry. Looks like you have some sunburn. Uh, it might be the lighting. I did get a little sun yesterday, maybe a little burnt. I went on a little float trip with some friends, which was super relaxing, really fun. And I was out in the sun a little bit on Sunday, too, with my hubby on the boat. <laughs> so I had a lot of water and sun. I usually don't burn too bad. If I do get a little red, it's brown the next day. So it might be the lighting, too. I finally got one of the metal mason jars from Dollar Tree. I'm going to recreate. Oh, yay, Kirsten. Awesome. They have all kinds of neat metal pieces now. I saw some copper pieces at Dollar Tree. I was super excited. I found a, I got a copper, I think it said thankful is what it was. Save that for the fall. I was super excited. Hello, Penny. And I think I saw my mama out there. It is her and my dad's 47th anniversary today. <laughs> 47th, I have to think. So yeah, they've been married a long time. Okay, putting a second coat on this real quick. Get this prep work, get this part done. And then we're going to get the finials ready. And then everything else I think is done where we can put it all together. Okay, I think that's good. We're going to set this aside. Let's close that up. But I'm going to save my brush because I do, I will need it in a little bit. Let's set that over there. Love. Oh, thank you, Joyce. Miss Tracy at Craft Around the Clock had these made for us. Aren't they cute? And the colors. She sent them to all of us uh, creatives that are on her page. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. Let's set this up here. We won't put the heat on it since I don't need it right now. Now, the finials that came from Lowe's, these were um, right at $3 for a pack of two. So not bad at all. So $3 for those. And we are going to make them about the same color as our inspiration piece. And I'll show you how I did that. Now, I just took the little metal part out. Just use some pliers and hold on to it really tight with the pliers and then twist. Twist that off of there, and then we'll do the same thing with this one. Now, if you want to drill holes in the bottom of your riser, you definitely can. And then just screw this finial on there. You can do that. We're just going to glue ours on. And I did some last night, and they are on there. They're snug. Okay, so now to get, it was kind of a really nice chestnut color, kind of tan um, with some brown tones in it. Not real dark, but not super light either. Um, color wood. So what I did was I started with, I had a warm buff. 
And this didn't make a lot of difference, but I did it on the other two legs, so I'm going to do the same because I want them to match. But it's a like a, a tan color paint, just apple barrel paint from Walmart. And then I watered it down to make it kind of like a stain. Just squirt a little water in there and then mix it up and make it runny because I wanted it to be more of a stain so that the wood would still show through. So nice and runny. Can you see that? Oh, see. Now, and then I just took a paper towel and wiped it on the finials. So you just dab your paper towel in there and then wipe it on. And so if you can see, it, it's a little bit darker, but it's not a whole lot. I probably could have got by with one step on these instead of doing two steps. But like I said, I did the other ones like this, so I'm going to make a match to make sure, just in case. But I probably, I'm going to put some Waverly Wax over top of this. I probably could have got by with just the Waverly Wax. But I don't know, because it might have soaked in the wood more. And this little layer of watered-down paint might be keeping it from soaking in the wood and making it too dark. So that was my thought, anyways, when I originally did this. I'm just wiping it on with paper towel. Really easy. Nice thin coat all the way around, just like that. And there's a little spot on that wood right there. It's like in the wood grain. Just gives it character. And then do the same thing with the other one. And if you don't get a real solid coat, it's okay because uh, the Waverly Wax is going to go on it as well. I might have to mix just a smidge more. I thought I mixed enough. A little bit more water to make it runny. So what's everybody up to this week, since last week, since I saw you last, or talked to you last? We've been doing a lot of time on the river and working, both. <laughs> when we're not on the river, we're working. If we're working, then as soon as we can, we get on the river. We, In the summertime, that's our favorite thing to do, to spend time out there. And the dogs love it too. That's their favorite place to be in the summer. <laughs> Hi, Kathy and Debbie. Okay, there we go. We have a code on that. Now, we are gonna set that aside and get out our Waverly Wax. This is just the antique wax that I use all the time. And we need a wipey because we're gonna put the wax on with a paper towel and then wipe it off with a wipey because I don't want it super dark. I want it to kind of match the inspiration piece. Let's get out two. Probably gonna need one for each leg. Okay, let's see. Let's tear that in half. And now I'm just gonna dab my paper towel in the lid and then start wiping it on there. And see how dark it's really dark. But then you take that wipey and you wipe it off and it gives you that real nice color that looks like the inspiration piece. Look at that. Look how pretty that is. Okay, we're going to keep going. And it just gives it a little more depth and adds some character too doing these layers like this. Wiping it on and then wiping it off. <laughs> Take your wipey. It'd be easier if I set it down on the table instead of holding it up. And the more you wipe, the lighter it gets. So if it's still a little too dark, you don't like it, you just keep on wiping. Look how pretty that looks. It kind of it gives it that antique look too. Did I get all the way around that already? I didn't think I did, but I did, I think. There's a little spot right there we'll get. 
And I want a little bit more on there. And using the wipey kind of helps smear it on there more. It spreads it out even more. Okay, let's do this one and then those will be ready. And then we can start putting this thing together. Hi, Catherine. Just, oh, thank you. Sticks to her subjects. So. Aw, thank you. <laughs> I try. Last week I think I was a little chatty and that ran me late. So I'm, I'm trying this week <laughs> to stay on task <laughs> and talk while I craft and not stop because <laughs> then I run behind. Okay, let's get the other side. I'm getting a new paper towel. That one's getting kind of crumbly. These are not the best paper towels. This was uh, like an inexpensive cheap pack of paper towels that I bought and my husband cannot stand that. <laughs> he likes the good paper towels so I use them in the craft room. They're fine for crafting. Hi Kathy from New York. Thank you for joining. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you for the stars and the hearts. I haven't said that yet. I see those stars and hearts. Okay, there we go. There's that one. Look how pretty. It gives it that antique look. All right, let's clean up. I only used the one wipey, so we'll use the other one for my hands. We're going to need this again because if you saw in the inspiration piece, the rope trim kind of has that antique finish on it as well. Okay, we're going to put it together. Now I have to think because it's kind of a process. Don't mind a little talking. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. So what I did was we're going to use, I bought the trays and I painted the inside. I showed you this one. These came from Dollar Tree. I like to start with some kind of a solid base when I'm building a tray. Um, you don't have to. You can use the tumbling blocks. You could use garden stakes as your like posts in all four corners of your table riser. But um, I always like to start with something that's already solid and together. That's just my preference. But you build it any way you want with what things that you have. So what I did was I'm using two of these. Three would not fit the length of the Dollar Tree board. And this looked like it was pretty close to the length of the inspiration piece. And like I said, I painted the inside. I did not worry about painting the outside because it's getting glued to everything, but I did paint the bottom as well. And I have one for the outside here and then one for this side, and then there's a space in here. If I had a third one of these, I would just use this right on the bottom, but I did not. And I went to three different Dollar Trees to find a third one of these and I couldn't find one so I improvised. That's where the paint sticks are going to come in. <laughs> so I'll show you when we get to that. Okay, so I have it started. Let me get all this out of the way. I'm not going to show you the front yet, but I have it started. So I have my long piece wood plank from Dollar Tree. I have my Dollar Tree tray and then one of the wood planks. They come in a pack of six at Dollar Tree. And I painted it blue, the blue, here's the other one. I went ahead and painted it that pretty blue color and put it on this end. And so that's why I like having this as my base to get me started. So I glued this side on and then this side and then I just used one of the tumbling blocks right up here in the corner to give it some more support up there. This is where you could use the paint sticks or you could use the tumbling blocks or you could use the garden stakes in the corners and then just put a long piece on the bottom. But I'm using what I had. So we are going to, let's go ahead and put this side on. Let's make sure, which side did I just paint? We are going to glue, nope, we're going to glue this one on first. I'm going to glue it on the other end and make sure it's flush with the bottom and flush with the side over here, just like that. And then this is giving me a good start to my uh, bottom of my riser. 
I'm just going to put some hot glue. You can put wood glue in here too, just to make it a little more. Like sometimes you feel like it's with wood glue, it might hold it a little better. Sometimes hot glue, you just never know. But I glued this side last night and it's really sturdy. It does help when you use chalk paint. <laughs> it makes everything stick. It helps it stick really well. Okay. So we have that glued on there like that. Oh. <laughs> you can see that I started. And then we're going to glue our end piece, the wood, the square wood plank. No, we're not. We're going to glue this piece on, the other long one on this end. Yes. And then the wood plank on the very end, just like that. So we're building our riser here just out of Dollar Tree supplies so far. So super inexpensive. The inspiration piece is $144. Okay, so let's put some glue on here. And then get this lined up where it's flush all the way across the bottom and pushed up snug on the other side. Make sure the it's flush on the other side over here, so you kind of got to squeeze it together, just like that. So I'm going to hold it there and let it dry for just a second. Hi, Judy, and hi, she this is Shelly from Canada. Welcome. Okay, now we're going to glue our wood plank, the square wood plank on the end. I think I need to flip it up like this so I can see what I'm doing. Yes, just like that. And glue that on. And then I just painted all of these pieces, that pretty buff blue from Waverly chalk paint. Put that on there like that. Let's say, welcome Pam and Donna. Thank you for joining, ladies. Okay, so there we go. There's the start to our table riser. Look at that. Now, let's see, there's the space. This is where if I had another one of these, I would just put it right across the bottom, glue it right on, even glue it to the bottom of these and just fill it in. But I did not, I could not find another one. Like I said, checked three Dollar Trees. Okay, let's put our tumbling blocks, what did I do with them? In the corners. And if I don't have time to um, paint those. I would like to go back because you can see I want to paint those blue to match. If I don't have time to do it on here, I'll do it. Let me think. I need glue on this side. I'll do it after the video. <laughs> now you squeeze your corners together and stick that tumbling block in there. And that's just going to help hold that corner at the top together nicely. Let that dry so it doesn't pop loose. We're going to do that in every corner. Putting glue on one of the wide sides and one of the skinny sides and stick it right there in the corner. Just like that. Hi Patricia. I'm trying to see if I can see a few comments while that's drying. Would one of the square planks fit at the bottom? So that was my original thought, Kirsten. That's funny. I have another one painted right here, and I'll show you why I changed my mind. Because it does fit. That's funny. You're thinking the same thing as me. It... Um, 
kind of shows at the bottom under the trim. I guess if you lower your trim down a little bit, then you could use one of the square ones because we're going to put rope trim along the bottom. If I stick that under there, see it shows like that. But if you drop your rope trim down a little bit, you definitely could use another one of these. And they come in a pack of six. Okay, there we go. Now we have our corners reinforced. And let's put our, I think we're gonna wait because I have my paint sticks right here. I'm gonna put those, I'm gonna put them on the inside, which it's gonna raise it up right here. But I like that idea because this is a lot of area to fill. And this is gonna be raised up a little bit so that it won't be quite as much to fill. Hope that makes sense. So that was my thought behind that. Let's put our rope trim all the way around. I already started, I'll show you. There's that side, and then there's that side. Look how pretty it's looking. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. So I just cut my rope trim. Now, I did not have my husband's, we did not have the right saw here to cut this set of 45. So I kind of tried to get 45s and it was not the best. So I'm going to show you a trick that I came up with <laughs> on the corners. I'm improvising again. Now I have to, the little squares on the end are just a smidge wider, taller than the, the long planks. So I am going to raise my trim up just a smidge. It's going to hang up, come up above the plank just a little bit. If you can see that right there. Okay. We're putting glue across the top. And I just cut them a little bit, a smidge longer than the length of our box. And I wanna make sure that they come up enough to cover so you don't see the height difference. Okay, now, my 45s are not the best, so to fix that, I'm going to put some hot glue in there. I did it at the bottom and it worked. Just fill in that space with some hot glue and then we're just going to paint right over it. And nobody will know <laughs> that I did not cut a very good 45. Okay, let's do this side. And this is an 18 inch board, so I cut these just a smidge over um, 18 inches. Let's do the bottom one. No, nope. I don't think it matters. Okay, we're gonna put rope trim. Now this rope trim came from Lowe's and this was the mo most expensive part of this project. It was $14 for an eight foot piece and you'll need the whole eight foot piece um, if you don't want to spend the $14 on the trim, you could use, there's other options. You could use regular rope, the white rope you get from Dollar Tree and glue that around it. That would totally work. You could use some kind of um, lacy ribbon, like one of these, maybe one of the skinnier ones and wrap that around it and kind of get the same look for a fraction of the price. Okay, I'm gonna do this one up here. And I'm just running a bead of glue all the way across the top. And then I'm gonna fill in my corners so you can't tell that I <laughs> did not do as good a job cutting as I would have liked to. Oh, I can't fill in my corners yet on that side, but I can on this side so they can be drying while I do the rest. Just squirt some hot glue right in that gap right there. And then we'll paint over it. And I, last night I had to squirt a little bit of glue in there, let it dry. I painted it and it needed a little more glue to fill it in a little more. So I just did it again. And you can't even tell at all. Okay, let's do the side here. Do this side. Is this the right piece? 
make sure I have the right one. I do. This one's looking a little short, so I'm going to have to fill in a little bit more. Bummer. I'm not sure what happened with that, but we're going to make it work. And you guys will be the only ones that know. <laughs> Nobody else will know. Okay, and then put this piece across the bottom, and then I'll show you what we have here. I fill in my corners. <laughs> this side is not good at all. Yikes. That's okay. And you know what? Even the seams right here, I'm going to fill in with hot glue. Kind of like caulk, like I'm caulking this thing. <laughs> when you caulk, tr you caulk trim. So we're going to kind of do that. Use the hot glue like caulk and go right down the corner here. And then I will touch it up with some more blue so you won't even see the seams on the corners. Okay, I knew that was going to run. Woo! Don't touch it. Let's see if I can keep it. I needed to do one side at a time so it doesn't run out. <laughs> Fill it with caulking. Yeah, I could for sure, for sure, if I had caulking on me. But we're going to improvise with what we have. Hot glue for now. But definitely, if you do it at home, you could use caulking. Okay, let's fill in this seam right here real quick. Let's see how our glue is doing. All right, we're going to let that dry for just a second. And then I'll touch up anything I need to touch up. Make sure if you guys have questions, you're throwing those questions out there because I will get back to them. Ooh, I have 14 minutes. I'm glad I did a lot of prep ahead of time. Now, while that's drying, we're going to start antiquing this a little bit, just like we did the other with the Waverly wax. I'm just going to brush it on with the brush and then wipe it off with a wipey. And then it's going to antique the whole project even the blue because you can't keep from smearing it everywhere but you want that look okay so I'm gonna go like I just wipe in the creases of the rope and then along the top and the bottom and then I wipe it off I'm not covering the entire rope just in the creases and then the top and the bottom and then wipe it off. And you can get in those creases if you don't want it that dark. If you like it that dark, leave it that way. Look at that. Cute. Gives it that antique look. More aged, like our inspiration piece. It was made to look vintage. Okay. I'm going to flip this over because I want to at least get one side completely done. If I have to finish the back, I will because I already have this bottom one antiqued. I want to antique this top one real quick. That way we can put our finial legs on it and ooh, got a little bit much there and put all the stuff in it so you can kind of see that it looks pretty similar to our inspiration piece. And then when you wipe it off, it's kind of smearing on the blue, which is great. You want that because you want it to look old. Not like it's freshly just, just been painted. And if someone asks, I know you guys are great about answering questions for me. <laughs> Sometimes people will ask questions and then I see that you guys answered it for me. That is awesome. I love it. <laughs> so don't hesitate if you want to answer something. Because <laughs> sometimes people hop on and they miss like the beginning or they miss something that I used. And some of you that have been on since the beginning, 
you heard that part, so you know. So it works out perfect. Okay, we are just going to antique the front, and I'll finish antiquing the rest. Smear it all over, just like that. I need to fill in this corner a little bit more. We're going to let that sit there. Now on the inspiration piece, they had a wood medallion on the front, a really pretty wood medallion. And used to, you used to be able to buy those at Lowe's. Um, I went there, they did not have anything like that. So um, I went to Michael's, they didn't have anything similar either. So I had to improvise. So we are using flowers. Now you could use the wooden flowers from Dollar Tree you can get these little wood cutouts. They're all the same size. I wanted a little variation in size, but you definitely could use these. You could put pearls on it with it. That would be cute. You could use some of these stickers from Dollar Tree. Just paint them the cream color and then stick them on the front. So you can use, those are all options. We're gonna use the pretty cream flowers that I have. So we're going to put those on there, and then we're going to put our feet and our paint sticks, and I should be able to decorate it. And then I'll do all the finishing touches on the corners and do all the finishing painting and antiquing and take a picture. Okay, I want my big flower right in the middle. Like I said, I kind of wanted some variation in size because the wood medallion started out thicker and it got narrow on the edges. So like, this is inspiration, it's not exact. <laughs> Thank you for the stars, I see all those stars out there. Welcome, Dree. Okay, so there's that one. Now I have some medium sized ones. And then I'm gonna kinda start them up high and taper them down a little, kinda like the inspiration piece. Just like that. And then I'll hold it up where you can see what it looks like. I wasn't sure how it was going to work, but I think I'm going to like it. So you could use any kind of flowers that you have. The, if they're a little more flat, they work better. Like these, these are kind of like a paper flower. I think you can get these in the like card section in the craft area of any craft store. Okay, we're going to glue this one on. Go down just a smidge because I want it to taper down a little, kind of like that wood medallion does. Where'd you get the flowers? These I think came from Michael's. I think. Flatten that out a little bit. Oops, and move that over just a smidge. Now, if you have to buy the flowers, that's going to add on to the price. If you have flowers, um, you can use, I know a lot of people use those molds and use air dry clay, and you can make your own like medallion on the front with the molds. I do not have any of those, um, but they're super neat. They're really cool. They're like, you can make a lot of neat things with them. I've seen a lot of crafters using them. Okay, look at that. Cute. I think it works. It's close to the inspiration piece. Gives the kind of the same look. Okay, let's put our paint sticks on the inside to fill that space. We're gonna, let's just do this. And three of, these are the five gallon paint stick pieces. Three of them fit right across here. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue on each end and gluing it right on there just to fill that. And like I said, I like that it's raised up a little bit, just less area to fill with stuff. Let's 
see how we're doing. Seven minutes. I think I can get it. <laughs> get it done. Get her done. Oh, thank you, Connie. Thank you, Terry. Okay. So, hot glue. Dripping down. I have strings everywhere. So there's what we have so far. Let's put our pretty finial, exactly like the inspiration piece. These are exact. We're going to put those on the bottom. And these came from Lowe's, two in a pack. They were right around $3. It was just a smidge over, but it was closer to three than four. We're going to glue those right on the ends here. Let's make sure that's not resting on something. And here's where you could use hot, uh, wood glue along with your hot glue. That one. Kind of try to get them lined up so that when it's sitting on a table, you can see that the legs are in a row. Okay, let's do this side. I think somebody sent this project to me, a picture, and I cannot remember who did. So if you were out there and you sent this picture to me, you'll have to let me know. <laughs> I thought it was so pretty. But the price, whoo, price was crazy. So this is what I love, the challenge of trying to recreate it for less. So with what everything that I've purchased, right at $24, 23, 23, 25. And the original cost was 144. Look at that, look how cute, oh my goodness. Adorable. What do you guys think? Like, like I said, I'm going to finish the corners and finish all the antiquing but and paint the tumbling blocks the blue so that it all blends in together. But that doesn't look terrible in, on the inside at all. I don't mind that at one bit. And the bottom's not terrible. I like it. I think it's super cute. And for the price, you can't beat that. <laughs> okay, we have about three or four minutes we're going to decorate it up kind of similar they had they had a white some kind of a pedestal thing in there and it had some kind of greenery on it so we're going to put that on there and then as filler i'm going to put some grocery bags down in there because that's a lot to fill you can just use whatever if you need to fill something put grocery bags down in it. Nobody will know. Okay. And then they had, I have a basket of all kinds of wicker balls here. They had all kinds of those in there. Let's do some little ones up close. Like that. We're going to stack some big ones in here. see how we're doing. I don't want to run because there's another crafter on crafter on the clock after me. So I don't want to run into her time. Fill those in. So you get an idea. That's kind of how theirs was. A little bit. Oops. The camera's backwards. And then they had some greenery kind of just laying over the top. I'm not sure how that's going to work here. We're going to try. It was just kind of laying over the wicker balls. Whoops. I'm trying to do this backwards. Uh-oh. Oh, it didn't roll off. <laughs> I thought it was going to go off my table. Let's grab it. And we'll put this one on there. Kind of bend that in there. There we go. And then this one goes right in there. That's it. What do you guys think? Two minutes. I did it. <laughs> I think it's pretty close. Pretty close. And for the price, you can't beat that. 
$144 versus $23. I hope you guys like that. I hope it inspires you to think outside the box to never pay full price for decor that you love. If you see ideas, send me those ideas. I see all those hearts. Thank you, thank you. What an awesome job. Aw, thanks, Debbie and Rita. Thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you guys. I appreciate it. All the hearts, all the comments, all the stars, everything. Thanks for joining me tonight. I will be back on tomorrow night on Craft Around the Clock for kitchen trash it's the kitchen trash to treasure so we are using something that you would normally throw away and making it into something useful so tomorrow night i'll be back on i hope to see you then and i will see you all next time have a good night bye